lab three quiz. Okay, so this is the quiz uh, for my friction lab. I'm gonna go over the solution. And I admit it's a little bit more difficult than I normally give, but it's also important to think about things in new ways. So let's do it. Okay, so a block sits on an inclined plane right there. What is the maximum force you can push horizontally this way before the block starts to slide up? So right there, we have a situation, right? Because we did in class the block sliding down the plane. So let's just review a block sliding down the plane because I think it'd be important to, to make a comparison. So here's a block. First of all, let me remind you about static friction. Let's do that. So if I have, uh, an object on a surface like that then and I push it with some force this way I'm just gonna say FP is that way and it doesn't move then there is a backwards pushing frictional force there's also a downward gravitational force and then there's an upward force from the floor we call that the normal force now if this thing is at rest and staying at rest then uh, I can say the net force is mass times acceleration, and that's a vector, and that's a vector, and the acceleration would be zero, and which is technically the zero vector, which is, you know, I hope you're okay with that. This is, I should put this right here. Okay. We can write this as two, the following two equations, uh, F net X, the X forces have to be zero, and the Y forces have to be zero. And so in this case, it's pretty easy, right? I can pick this as my x-axis and this is my y-axis. You can pick wherever you want. And in that case, I have in the x direction, negative the friction force plus the push force is equal to zero. And I have the normal force minus mg is equal to zero. And so no matter if I, if it's not moving, the push force has to be equal to the friction force. And the harder I push, the greater the friction force up to some point. And so from that, we get the following model for the magnitude of the friction force. The frictional F friction is less than or equal to the coefficient of friction mu sub S times the normal force. This is not a vector equation. This is a scalar equation. Okay. And that's our model for static friction. And static meaning that uh, the two surfaces do not slide relative to each other. So this is the friction force magnitude. This is the constraint. And that's one of the things that makes friction a little bit weird, especially static friction, is that it could be zero, right? If I push, if I don't push at all and I still have the maximum friction force, it would start sliding back this way. That doesn't happen. That's weird. So we have to have this less than or equal to there. Uh, mu, I'm running out of space here. This is the coefficient of fric friction. I missed the E of friction. It's a it's a parameter between zero and one that depends on the two types of surfaces interacting. So wood on steel, Teflon on felt, whatever. That's what that is. And then this is the normal force. It's the force uh, pushing up perpendicular to the surface. And so you'll notice that if I push down on this. If I push down on the block, I'll increase the normal force and increase friction. And you know that if you push down on a material, you can increase the friction. Okay, now let's do the incline, the plane incline plane. The, that's funny, the plane incline plane. Theta, at some angle like that. So now in this case, I have, uh, let's just say it's sitting there and it's not moving at all. Let's say in the, in the lab, what we did was we raised it, the incline until it's just about to slide. So we're at the maximum friction of force, and that's really important. So then I can write uh, F friction max is equal to mu times S times N. That's important because I can use this equation. That one's pretty tough. So here I have the downward gravitational force. I have a normal force this way, which is normal to this surface, so it's perpendicular. And then in order for it to not move, I have friction up the plane. 
And then if I call this my x-axis and this my y, then I can say f net x is going to be equal to, I have a component of the gravitational force in the x direction. It turns out that this angle right here is theta. I'm going to rewrite this because uh, on the next problem, so it will it'll make more sense. This is a review. And so this would be equal to mg times the sine of theta, right? Because that's the component of the gravitational force in the x direction. And then I have minus the frictional force and that'd be equal to zero. In the y direction, I have the normal force and a part of the gravitational force mg cosine theta equals zero. So if I solve this for friction, um, I get friction, I just add that to the other side, is mg sine theta. And then if I set that equal to mu s times the normal force, the normal force is mg cosine theta. So what we did in lab was solve for the coefficient, and if I divide both sides by mg cosine theta, I get mu s equals mg sine theta over mg cosine theta, and the mg's cancel, and this is tangent theta. Okay, so now let's use that same idea right here. Let's draw the forces acting on the block. I, I probably need to redraw it because I have that force in a weird place, but here's the gravitational force, mg, and then I have the normal force, n. Now, what's different, I'm going to, and let me draw the whole thing down here. I, let me draw this, actually. This is the angle theta, and if that is the angle theta, because if this is, uh, this is the complement of, they have a right triangle right here, theta, and that's a complement of theta. This is also a right angle right here. And so if that's the complement of theta, that's the complement of the complement, which is back to theta. So let's draw this down here so I can put that force there. So here's my x, here's my y, here's mg, here's n, it's perpendicular. And then I have FP pushing this way. Now, which way is, that should be completely horizontal, and that was my fault. Now, which way would friction have to push? It can either go up the incline or down the incline so that it doesn't move. Well, it have to, the only way I can get all these forces to add up to zero, it's gonna have to go this way. It doesn't actually have to, but it's gonna go this way. Right, because this says up, I want to prevent it going up the incline. So let's again say this is x, this is y. So now I can uh, get some angles here. This is the angle theta. This is also the angle theta right there, right? Because if I draw this right there, this is the same angle as that. So let's get our f net x. What forces are acting in this direction? This is our x direction. Well, again, I have part of the gravitational force. It's going to be equal to mg uh, sine of theta. I have the friction force plus f friction. And then I have this component of the push. This is going to be minus. I need to do this on a new piece of paper. I'm, I'm running out of room. So it's going to be equal to uh, f net x. It's going to be equal to mg sine theta plus the friction force minus a component of this, right, which is this force right here. So it's going to be minus f push times cosine of theta. Now notice that this is cosine and that's sine because of the way the angles are, right? You have to look at these angles. Here's my x component of the gravitational force. Here's my x component of the push force. And this one is the adjacent side, so I use cosine. This one's the opposite side, so I use sine. Uh, so I'm trying to find uh, FP. Um, and so I, I need, if I want to find the friction force, the maximum friction force, I can say FF is equal to mu s times n, and I know the coefficient, but I don't know n. So now let's look at the y direction, f net y. 
and then we can find the normal force. So in the y direction, I have n, and then I have a component of the gravitational force minus mg cosine theta, right, because that's the adjacent side, and then I have a part of the push force minus fp sine of theta. And I know theta, right? So I know theta is 33 degrees. I know mu s is 0 0.14. I know the mass is 2 or 0 0.22 kilograms. And I know g is 9.8. So I know a lot of stuff, OK? So the first thing I want to do is to get an expression for n. I mean, I can't get it all the way. I mean, I could put it, I could put in all my values here. I, and if you want to do that, I respect that decision. I, I don't want to do that. I want to wait to the end. So I'm going to solve this for n. And I'm going to add these two to both sides. mg cosine theta plus fp sine theta. I don't know fp, and that's fine. But now I can write the friction force. ff is going to be mu s mg cosine theta plus mu s fp sine theta. All I did was multiply this by mu s. Now I can plug that in up here, and I get this equation becomes mg sine theta plus the friction force, which is this whole thing, mu s mg cosine theta. These are all just numbers, though, right? That's just a number. I know everything there. Plus mu s fp sine theta. And then I have this minus fp cosine theta and rem equals zero. Remember, I want to solve for fp. So right here, I'm going to uh, subtract this from, I want to get the fps on one side. So I'm going to subtract this and add that to both sides. I get mg sine theta plus mu s mg cosine theta equals fp. I'm actually going to factor out the fp too. I know that's two steps. Cosine theta minus mu s sine theta. So now I can just divide both sides by this, and I get fp is equal to mg sine theta plus mu s mg cosine theta. These are all just numbers, so you, you could just write those as numbers if that made you happy. Cosine theta minus mu s sine theta. Okay, and you'll notice that the mass does not cancel, and that's fine. Let's just put this in our calculator. Let me write out the numbers, because I think they'll make it better. So I'm going to say 0.222, I'm not going to put the units, times 9.8 times sine of 33, that's right, plus uh, mu, which was 0.14, I'm going to run out of room, times 0.222 times 9.8 ah, times cosine of 33. All of that over cosine of 33 minus 0.14 sine of 33. So this is a great practice for your order of operations in your calculator. So let's see if I, I don't, I'm not a huge calculator person, but let's see if we can get this uh, without making a mistake. I'm going to move that right there. So I'm going to say, uh, on, clear. Now, I want to use parentheses up here because I have two terms, right? So I'm going to put parentheses and then say 0 0.222. Oops, clear. I messed up already. 0 0.123222 times 9.8 times sine of 33. I am in degrees mode. 33, close parentheses for the sine. And then I'm going to say plus... 0.14 times 0.222 times 9.8 times cosine of 33, close parenthesis. Now I need a close parenthesis for the top. I'm going to say divided by open parenthesis because I have these two things. Cosine 33 minus 0.14 times sine 33, close parenthesis, close parenthesis equals, and I get 1.52. There you go. So maybe that problem was too difficult. I, I am accepting that. Um, but 
I mean, you should be able to do a couple things, right? The most important thing, number one, to be able to draw a free body diagram like this. Number two, set up these two equations, F net X and F net Y, uh, and then solve for what you don't know. And I will say, actually, this problem might be a little bit easier, about the same. Uh, if you call this your X axis and that and their Y, it doesn't matter. You could do it either way. So that's a friction quiz that was more difficult than I anticipated. But there you have it.